are going to do something I think is very exciting because sometimes we make a mortise and tenon joint, we use a draw bore pin to draw the joint shoulders tight together, but we don't really know what's got to see what's going on inside that joint. So what we're going to do, I've decided to make the draw bore uh, pin, the joint, everything, put everything together, but I'm going to glue it so that the draw bore pin will stay in place when I slice through the joint afterwards so that you can see exactly what's happening to the draw bore pin and inside the joint as well. You can or don't need to use glue when you're making a draw bore pinned joint, but we're going to glue it in this case. You don't have to, it's entirely up to you. So I've made my joint, I've got it ready to go. What I have to do, the important thing about um, the draw bore pin, the effect it has, that's the pin that goes through a hole board in here, is that the hole in the tenon is offset so that the hole is about a sixteenth nearer to the shoulder. Now that distance can vary depending on the size of the joint. So if you were doing a timber frame building, it could be quarter of an inch, half an inch from that shoulder. But this is what we're going to do. So we're going to use a one sixteenth margin in there. So we don't put this together and drill through both of them because the inside one on the tenon is going to have to be offset. So if I in the middle, I'm just eyeballing the center here of the, of the mortise hole. Now, depending on what you want, I'm going to put my draw bore pin about three quarters of an inch from the shoulder line, but you can put it in the middle. The, diff, the, the reason I'm going nearer to the shoulder is that guarantees that shrinkage will take place on the outside and not between the shoulder and the, the uh, style that it would normally go into. So we're going to bore this hole. I'm using a half inch uh, draw bore pin on this. So I just simply bore through this first level into the mortise hole. If I can get this to do what it should be doing. This is the only boring bit on this really. So we're going to go through that first one. And now I'm into the second one. And I'm going to go until that pinpoint comes through here. There it is. Because uh, I don't want that to burst out on the outside. This is a neat concept. I don't know who came up with this idea millennia ago, probably. So there I am. I'm through that first one. And now I want to put this inside here because I need to get that position for the next hole. And this is where I just simply punch the surface hole here with the brad point of the drill, like that. And then I take it apart. Like that. And this is important now, don't go the wrong direction. I don't want to go on this side, I'm going on the inside here by about a sixteenth. I need it to line up. Uh, along the tenon, but not uh, on the width of the tenon. So I'm going directly as close as I can get it. Nope. It slid off because of the growth ring. So I'm going to put a, let's see if I can help you see it. It moved over to the left and I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to move it over to this side. I want this to work so that you can see it. There we go. Okay. We'll just bore until that snail comes through again. Like that. Okay. We've got the holes in there. 
Now I'm going to be gluing this, but what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to cut my drawbore pin because I don't want to apply the glue just yet. So what we do, we want to make the drawbore pin. So I've just taken a washer with a half inch uh, diameter hole on the middle hole, on the center hole. And just take a chisel. Now, I'll, I'll do this just for safety so that you can see. I was going to do it differently, but we'll put this here. You want some straight grained oak and then just take the corners off like this. That's giving a bit of a leading edge into the hole. So we'll take the corners off. Of course my draw bore pin is quite long. And that should start in the hole if I drop this in here. So I'm just going to start this like that and then take it back off. because I want to take all the corners off. So now I've got a diameter here. I, I've got the diameter of the overall. Put this in the vise again. Now there's different ways of making a drawbore pin. This may be different than anything you've seen. It might be exactly the same. So I just use my spoke shave now to get that diameter nearer to there. And we've got a video, we've got other videos on using drawbore pins too, so. Let's try and get it close. Once I've got that down like that, I just put this in the vise this way. And just take down the main corners. Like that. This prepares it, it saves beating this heavy uh, volume of wood through the hole. So it's just reducing the opposition just a little bit. It doesn't have to be exactly sized in terms of equally. There we have it. So now, now I've made a block of wood. I've got an oversized hole on the bottom and I've got a slightly oversized hole so that the diameter fits inside. And this is my half inch hole in the washer. So just drive this through. Like that. And we've got a, a draw bore pin. Sometimes they were only done with spoke shave, so they weren't even at all. So we're ready. So this does fit inside the hole I've got a tapered start, but I'm going to taper it even more here because I want it to go past that 1 16th step inside the hole so that it doesn't break it away. And that should do it. I'm going to glue this now, as I said. Typically, a lot of times you do not glue it, but there is no reason why you shouldn't. But I want the joint to stay together. I may even glue the pin and then I'm going to leave it alone for a while until the glue hardens off. And I think this will really help you to understand exactly what's happening to that pin when we take it, uh, when we cut it apart. Now the drawbore pin was in the pre-clamp days. We didn't have clamps. So when you draw this pin, inside the hole, there's a step inside there that offsets. So we've got the main hole, then the offset, and then we put the pin in, drive that through, and it bends as it goes through the hole. So that's what we need to understand. That's what's taking place inside that hole. 
Now I'm going to just use this because I want that to take the, the draw ball pin through it. And I want you to see what's happening as I drive it. So there we've got a bend on the top. This has now hit the hole, so it's bending that, that um, draw ball pin. And now it's straightening up. So it's straightening up and it's coming through the opposite side. So I drive it all the way in. So I've got a full round on this side. And there it is. So we're going to leave that now to dry and then we'll cut it apart. I have left this to dry with the glue inside and hopefully it'll all stay together. But I'm going to cut through this dowel across it. Like this and the same on this side. And then I want to mark off center because I'm going to try and leave half of the the, um, the peg in place. So I'm going to go, so I know to cut on this side of my line. This is just so that I leave a goodly amount that you can see. Otherwise the saw kerf will take us off course a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna drop this. Well, maybe not too much there. Oops. And hopefully I get this right. So when we take this apart, let's take a look at what we've got. So it did stay together. I, I've got a bend in the wood here. This is where the peg bent and I expected it to. This gap on this piece here, same on that one, is where the wood compressed, but it's also still an offset hole. So this section of wood has compressed because it's between these two fixed points. It's very important. I can see how it's bent to the conform conformation of the two offset holes. It becomes a, per a permanent bend in that wood. This is going to be retaining that joint for the rest of its life. It could be 100, it could be 200, it could be 500 years. This was an amazing development in woodworking that drew those two components together because there was no clamp in that time. There was no screw thread. It wasn't available to woodworkers. So this was a method that was developed by uh, the energy of those woodworkers of that time who knew they had to have something that was permanently holding it together. It didn't matter whether there was glue in there or not. I put the glue in just so we could keep this together so I could show you. You can see how this is, this conformation of this wood, this union of the joint is pegged together with this one component. It's amazing. <music> Thank you.